One thing that Nintendo has been really phoning in for the last nearly decade and a half are the 2D Mario boss battles. Seriously, from the army of Koopalings in New Super Mario Bros, to the repeating Bowser Jr. in Super Mario Bros. Wonder, if you've played a 2D Mario lately, you probably have been underwhelmed at the end of each world. Historically, 2D Mario has not had interesting boss battles. The original Super Mario Bros. just had you drop Bowser in lava at the end of each world. And Super Mario Bros. 3 in World are guilty of the same coupling use that plagues the latter three new Super Mario Bros. games. Though, these 80s and 90s games should get a little bit of a pass considering that 1. This was as advanced as the bosses could be at the time, and 2. The Koopalings were still new and unique bosses at the time of 3 in World. I think the problem with Nintendo reusing commonly seen characters for boss battles is that there are a ton of great bosses that Nintendo can use. If you look at the spin-offs from the Mario and Luigi and Paper Mario series, you've already got a ton of characters to choose from that can be plopped at the end of each world castle. But maybe Nintendo doesn't want to, or perhaps legally cannot, use the characters made for these spin-offs. Even if you don't look to the spin-offs, there are lots of bosses that Mario definitely has access to that they are actively choosing to not invite to the party. There was a time not too long ago in Mario's history where it seemed Nintendo wanted to improve on boss variety rather than shy away from it. Two games show this the most, Super Mario 64 DS and the original New Super Mario Bros. There are three bosses that I want to highlight from these games that show you why Nintendo needs to bring back interesting boss design. There was a time where I thought that Nintendo was setting up Goom Boss to be the resident first boss in Mario games. He would fit the role so well. The first enemy is a Goomba, so the first boss is King of the Goombas. Nope, Goom Boss only has three canon appearances. Hey, at least he's the boss in this video who has appeared in the most games. Stay tuned. The next two bosses I'm going to talk about are even more obscure. Goom Boss was originally introduced in Paper Mario, a spin-off game. He functioned very much as a giant Goomba would, as an early boss battle. As I mentioned earlier, it's possible that spin-off games are off limits in terms of using characters in mainline Mario, but some characters have exceeded this rule. As such, I will assume that Nintendo is legally allowed to use Goom Boss in games like Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and actively chose not to just because they like being boring. Goomboss's next appearance was in the DS remake of Super Mario 64 as an early boss battle. In your first fight against him, the player must play as Yoshi, and you have to eat his Goombas and spit them back at him, or turn them into eggs to throw at him. Every time he's hit, he gets bigger, angrier, and his Goomba minion army grows. So why is he only in the remake, but not the original? Well, the original Super Mario 64 had only one playable character. Character, Mario. But Super Mario 64 DS decided to let us play as four different characters Yoshi, Mario, Luigi, and Wario. Yes, Wario. So disappointing that Nintendo tightened up the restrictions so much since this era. Imagine what we could have had if they decided Wario got to be in mainline Mario. But alas, this is the last time Wario has even gotten close to the main Mario series. So in the game, you start as Yoshi, and then you progressively unlock Mario, then Luigi, and then Wario by defeating the bosses that captured them. Wait, so in this game, Mario, Luigi, and Wario all got beat by different characters? Who did Goombas defeat? Wait, Mario? This dude canonically defeated and captured Mario. How did Bowser not promote him for that? Goomboss also appears as a boss battle in Mario Kart DS's mission mode. Because yes, Mario Kart had boss battles back during this time, and they never did it again. Imagine if they kept this up. Imagine boss battles in 8 Deluxe, how I dream of a better world. Anyway, Goomboss is actually one of the more underwhelming boss fights in this game. I love the character, but he wasn't used as well in this game as he was in 64 DS, which is a shame because, again, this is one of only three appearances of this character across the entire nearly 40-year-old franchise. The boss battle is basically just a race. You know, that thing you do in, like, almost all of Mario Kart, except the boss battles, and boss battles are exciting because they're not races, which is the thing you do for most of the game. It doesn't make any sense. Why did they make one of the boss battles a race? It's dumb. So basically, Goomboss runs, and you drive and you have to get to the end before him. And if you get to the finish line first, he just explodes. He literally just gets so mad about losing, he blows up. <laughs> 
this boss battle even gets more points off because you race him on Baby Park, the worst Mario Kart track. The only upside to the Goombas race is that he puts Goombas in your way, and has a chance to put a mushroom instead of a Goomba. So you have to drive close enough to him to try and catch a mushroom, but you have to be on your toes in order to not hit a Goomba. Now how would I improve this fight? Well first off, change the course from Baby Park to Mario Circuit. Sure, Mario Circuit on the DS isn't the most interesting track in the world, but it's a regular grassland, which is the main habitat of Goombas. Next, make it so you actually have to hit Goombas after running into the mushroom, damaging him in the process. If you get to the end of the track without defeating Goombas, you lose. So that way, you only get so many chances to hit the mushroom right. If you get the first three mushrooms perfect, you get yourself a perfect three-star score. One future Mario game that I think should have included Goombas is Super Mario Odyssey. I just think it would have been hilarious for Mario to infiltrate his Goomba army with a captured Goomba. The boss battle could revolve around needing to get a larger and larger Goomba tower in order to stomp on your dear leader. A ruler brought down by his people. The original New Super Mario Bros for the Nintendo DS is the only New Super Mario Bros to not include the Koopalings. As such, it featured interesting boss battles all throughout the game. This is not to say that this game had perfect boss battles. World 1 had the regular Bowser break the bridge stuff, also each tower only had Bowser Jr. as the boss, so have fun fighting him about 10 times throughout the game. Of the interesting bosses of New Super Mario Bros DS, I would like to highlight Lacketh Thunder. This Lakitu possesses the power of Zeus, and rains it down upon you should you cross his path. The fight is actually not that great gameplay wise. He shoots thunder, sure, but it's just your basic jump on his head three times kind of fight. The only reason I want to talk about him is because he's awesome, not because his fight was very fun to play. How would I improve this boss battle? Well, first improvement, instead of just having the lightning go straight down, have there be metal areas on the battlefield that turn electrified should they get struck by the lightning. This way, Mario has to move a little bit in order to not get zapped. Next, have some Lakitu minions join Lack of Thunder on the battlefield. Field. Then have the Lakitu minions be the ones who come down and attack you, so Mario could snatch their clouds and come up to attack like a thunder. It's still a simple boss, sure, but these bosses don't need to be too complex, just a nice little challenge with an interesting character. If Lack of Thunder could have appeared in any future Mario game, I think he definitely deserved a spot in Super Mario Bros. Wonder. One of the biggest flaws in Wonder is the lack of a proper boss battle in all of the airship levels. Mario games have pretty much always put bosses at the end of airship levels and Wonder kind of broke that tradition. I mean, I guess they kind of do a boss battle. There's this conveyor belt with some obstacles and you have to press a big red button that just blows up the airship. So lame. The boss of these airship levels should have been Lack of Thunder. He would have fit perfectly in these dangerous skies. But if you think conveyor belts with big buttons are better, then glad you enjoyed them. A Mario enemy that has been underused as of late is the Bully. These guys appeared in Super Mario 64 and haven't made too many appearances since then. They are still around sometimes, appearing in Super Mario 3D World and even being a placeable enemy in Super Mario Maker 2. The reason that Bullies haven't really appeared much since Super Mario 64 is that their enemy gimmick really only works with Super Mario 64 since that's the only 3D Mario game that allows you to PUNCH. See, Bullies try to push you off the stage, and when you hit them, they get pushed back as well. The only way to defeat them is to knock them off the stage, usually into lava. In Super Mario 3D World, you have to jump on them in order to knock them off the stage, and that just lacks the same impact as the good old with the bullies rarely appearing, their bosses pretty much never got another appearance. The bully bosses are the big bully and the frost bully, but they aren't the subject of this video. Oh no, we're gonna be talking about the chief himself, Chief Chili. Chief Chili was not in the original Super Mario 64. Much like Goombas, he only appears in the remake, and he must be defeated in order to unlock Wario. His battle is the most advanced version of the big bully battles, which we've seen a lot of by this point in the game. It requires the player to punch him off the stage three times. He's not the easiest fight in the world. I'll still die every so often. Chief Chili got to appear in one more Mario game, Mario Kart DS. In fact, Chief Chili is in some ways the final boss of Mario Kart DS. The credits even play after you defeat him. I mean, technically there's a secret world of missions with Wiggler as the final boss, but that's more of a secret final boss. I'd say the actual final boss of Mario Kart DS is Chief Chili, a character who never got another appearance in the series after this. It's actually kind of sad. 
His boss battle is just a harder version of the first boss battle against the big bully. You have to use mushroom powers to hit him into the water three times. I actually failed this boss battle a lot because this dude decides to jump on his last life, which causes you to fly straight into the water behind him. He's actually really hard, and if you want to get a three star ranking, you'd better work on your timing. Honestly, if there's one thing going for Chief Chili, it's that both of his appearances are excellent. Sure, he's only appeared twice, but that gives him a 100% approval rating from me. They're exactly exactly what they should be for the culmination of all the bully fights. And Chief Shilly is an awesome character. Just look at that ice mustache! If they're not going to bring him back in Mario, do you think they could at least put him in the Wario series? I mean, he is Wario's villain after all. The game I would have liked to see Chief Chili in the most is Super Mario 3D World. Even though this was a 3D Mario game, it also suffered greatly from the same lack of boss variety as the 2D series does. Since bullies appear in this game, I think it's a good idea to have their chief show up as well. There is a boss battle in 3D World with some boss of the bullies, but I don't think he's as awesome as Chief Chili. I would like to see him in this game too. In this boss fight, I think it should be impossible to jump on him, and you would have to find some other way to knock him off the stage, such as throwing a shell or another object at him. Perhaps there could be boosts littered throughout the stage that can propel you into his icy body. And those are three obscure bosses that I think need to return to Mario pronto. What bosses would you have liked to hear me talk about? Do you think these bosses should reappear? Do you think I complain too much and the bosses in Mario games are fine? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time.